right, everyone. Welcome back to the Dunnigan Mott Music and Movie Podcast Reboot. Yeah, we're going to reboot things a little bit this week. Um, kind of redo our format a little bit. But um, I'm Devin Dunnigan, and with me, as always, is Mr. Stephen Mott. How you doing, Stephen? Great, brothers, Jake. All righty. Well, yeah, it's been a little while since me and you have recorded. Um. Within these two weeks, a lot of stuff's happened. I've graduated high school, and I mean, don't feel too different, but um, yeah, um, really don't have a whole lot to say. There's been a lot of different stuff going on, but um, other than that, I mean, news-wise, as far as the entertainment part of things go, um, there, there's actually a pretty good bit of news, but now thinking about it, I can't remember a single news story. So, um, other than like Coverdale still been releasing stuff for that for the upcoming rock album, but um, remixes and stuff like that, which they've been good. I've listened to them, but um, yeah. Um, in the last episode, um, White Snake Saints and Sinners, which by now you probably heard, um. We took a dive into the 80s era and um, did an album from the 80s. So we're hopping forward this week with, um, we're hopping forward a whole nother decade with um, 2005's Merle Haggard's Chicago Wind. And um, yeah, um, kind of got into something more bluesier last week with Saints and Sinners and um with me saying last week, actually, we we're going to have two episodes in between this one and um, Saints and Sinners. We're going to have, by this point, you've probably heard um, we've done a uh, Eric Clapton discography retrospective or whatever. And that'll be up. It's going to be in three parts. It'll be up in between these episodes. But, um, yeah, this is in... Um, Chrono- chronology or however you say the word it, this is episode five but um yeah we're going to take a dive um out of, we took a dive into kind of some more bluesier stuff with white snake this way we're going to take a dive into some country stuff and um you got anything to say about this album as far as like some of the facts behind it and stuff steven because this was your pick so um, yeah, yeah yeah leave it up to me to to uh you know I, I like to listen to a lot of different stuff. So we go to blues, to country, to hard rock, to, you know, all this different stuff. But anyway, oh, we got Merle Haggard, uh, Chicago Wind, released on October 25th, 2005. Its length is 40 minutes and 46 seconds. And it's got 11 tracks on it, brother. Um, 58 studio album by him. A lot of stuff up to this point. I don't think this was one of his last albums uh, because he died not too long ago. I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, somewhere a couple of years back. This was one of his last albums here. Um, I guess I guess that's all for the facts, there, brother. All right. I think he died back in 2016, I believe. I could be wrong, but I think it was, it's either 2016 or it's somewhere in there. I have to look it up and if, I'll, I'll look it up right now. In fact, cause I'm on here. Um, let me see. Merle Haggard's 2016. So, uh, Yeah, I knew it was around there somewhere. And um, I remember, I remember hearing about it, but at the time I wasn't really, I hadn't heard much by him, really. Yeah. And, um, well, how did you discover Merle Haggard, Stephen? <laughs> well, pretty much kind of just recently. I just decided one day just to look up Merle Haggard, and uh, I, I just punched on some of his albums. Like, this one, I think, was the first full album I've even heard by him that we're facing to review here, Chicago Wind. And uh, really... I just I heard him and I thought he he had some real good songwriting ability and I, I I've always you know heard that he was one of the best country singers but I never got into it much 
And I, I really, I, I then went back after this. This is kind of irrelevant somewhat, but I went back and listened to his first album. And, you know, about his first three three albums I listened to. And they're, and they're all, I mean, his music doesn't really change from then till this album that much, if you just listen to it. His songwriting still kind of reflects the same things. He writes some things about, you know, political things patriotic things and he, of course love songs i mean you know that's the staple of country music that's the one thing country kind of goes along with blues with it's, it's kind of about sort of the same things sometimes you know yeah but uh other than that i guess uh you can say and also i would like to add um uh, there was one the most of the, he he did all the vocals on this album it, Except for on the last track, um, Toby Keith sings. I believe it's him. I'm just I'm just going by what I hear, but it didn't even say that. But I'm pretty sure that's Toby Keith singing on that one. But we'll get to that later. Yeah, man. Um, spoiler alert, it is. But uh, <laughs> but um, yeah. I just go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say you can you can say whatever, and then we can get to the track listing, I guess. Okay, but um. Going back to what I was fixing to say, um, I discovered Merle Haggard, um, kind of, I've known of him all of my life, really, um, my dad was a, is a pretty big fan of, of the artist, and, um, I knew stuff like Swinging Doors, Working Man Blues, um, Sing Me Back Home, um, Mama Tried, and stuff like that, I believe Mama Tried is Merle Haggard, I couldn't, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's Merle Haggard, but, um, yeah, um, I've always really, really liked his material. This is the first time I've heard anything off of this album, and, and this is the first album I've heard in its entirety by him. I knew his, basically his greatest hits, but um, other than that, I really never, I never knew a lot of his full-on kind of, I guess you could could say deep tracks or whatever. But um. With White Snake Saints and Sinners, um, you were a little bit kind of mixed with the album. Um, I'm a little bit mixed on this album, actually. So um, it, it's going to be an interesting review throughout. But um, that's good. You probably—I was just going to say that you probably have heard a lot of this stuff down at the Opry. Yeah, I definitely have. I've heard more stuff down there than uh, by him than even listening to the actual songs but um and also i like leonard skinner covered the track honky tonk nighttime man which is um a merle haggard track so i knew that song as well but um yeah um that's pretty much all i have for backstory um basically you said everything i had came out in 2005 um his 58 studio album and um this album hit number 54 in the charts, on um, the country charts. And, um, yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get into the first track. Um, you take the first track. Well, you, with this, you'll take the first track. You'll take the, fir you'll take the track first on every song. But, um, yeah, let's get into it then. All right, brother. First track, title track, Chicago Wind. And I would like to say that um has some great guitar playing on it as this whole album. I'm not sure how much of it is Merle. I know he plays guitar pretty well. But uh I know he has a, a couple of other ones on the on the record. Uh from what I hear. And also the only other thing I would like to say is great song overall. Uh and it has a, a unique sound to it as far as the music part of it as far as country the country genre i should say and um i guess that's about it it's about chicago pretty much so uh what about you brother all right well the only thing i have written down for this track is um chicago win i like the track quite a bit um very kind of clapton-esque in my opinion i think it has kind of like a kind of modern day clapton feel to it and um, I could very much picture him doing this track. It would be interesting to hear him do this track, but um, kind of has that Tulsa sound that we've mentioned several times in our reviews prior. But um, 
Yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have for the track. I think it's one of the better tracks on the album and a great opening track. And um, lyrically, I mean, Merle Haggard's a great lyricist. And um, that's all I have. So um, there you go, Steve, and we get into the next track. All right. Um, the next one, Where's All the Freedom? Uh, also, that we've been fighting for. Um all I can say is I, I love the riff with it. Um, it's it's a patriotic song, which he, he writes a lot of songs like that, mainly about America. But also, later in the album, he writes one about Mexico being good, which is kind of different. But uh, in this one, it's just about, you know, America needing to, you know, f- make more freedom and all. And talks about the Ten Commandments and all that and his son or his grandson going to battle or whatever. I'm not, I mean, that's probably all true stuff there, but uh, somewhere below Seattle, he mentions, I think it's, I think it's really, he's a really unique songwriter and really, I don't think anybody can write songs quite like he can. I mean, not, I mean, I'm not saying he's de- definitely the greatest, but I'm just saying not quite in the same way he does. He kind of writes on a more personal level than more people do, most people. So uh, what about you, brother? Um, very good track. Kind of harkens back to kind of some of the earlier country stuff, um, some stuff like Johnny Cash I kind of get a vibe with for this particular song. Um, this track does, Merle Hacker's voice has kind of worn at this point. I, I mean, it's, this happens on several songs. But at points, he kind of strains his voice a little bit. And um, very much a lot of kind of post-9-11 sediment with how a lot of people felt after that happened. And um, basically a good commentary on how the world is today. And um, overall, a very, very good song. And um, like you said, a kind of a, a more patriotic number on the album. And um, I, I like it quite a bit. And um that's pretty much all I have to say on this one. Um, a great, a very good track. And, um, yeah, um, back to you, Steve. Well, the other thing more I can say about this one is, you know, I said it was patriotic, but really, I, I'm not sure if it's really patriotic because it's kind of, it's all, it's almost like putting down America somewhat because uh, talking about America's, supposed to be all free and and not being able to put up the ten commandments and all that and really it's it's more kind of not you know put not all the way putting down america but because we we had freedom in the first place from america but it's more kind of saying what america could do better pretty much so i don't know if it's necessarily patriotic i would say more i could say just talking about america because yeah, that's the only way i can think to describe it yeah kind of a more of a commentary on the state of america and stuff i understand right well anyway uh i guess we'll move on to the next track oh yeah go ahead all right next one is white man singing the blues this one is kind of kind of a no to the blues i guess um uh, like I said before, it kind of made me think that the blues and country, if you think about it, it's kind of sort of about the same stuff. The blues is a lot a lot about, you know, talking about how somebody did you wrong or something or basically a lot about love. And, and this one, I mean, not necessarily this track, but it's just blues and country kind of are about the same thing, not necessarily musically, but. As, or as far as what they're about, it's pretty much kind of the same. And uh, other than that, I mean, it's kind of it kind of tells a little story there, uh, like country often does, about about a black man coming and singing with him or whatever. I like the, I like the idea. That's that's what I'm talking about with the songwriting too. He writes on a more personal level than most most do. Most most uh, songwriters they stay more on a broad level, you know. But uh, he he kind of delves into quite a few topics throughout just this album itself, you know. 
not to mention his whole career in music. Uh, what about you, brother? Um, well, just going back to the previous track, I mean, in this album as a whole, to me, it does have it does very much have kind of this post 9-11 kind of sediment to where it, it to me this whole album is kind of a commentary on the kind of this how the world was at, uh, the state of the world and the state of america at the time i mean that kind of goes through this whole album for me it kind of has a common theme in my opinion but um white man singing the blues um a good song kind of a um waltz type track and uh great harmonies throughout um i don't like the guitar solos on this in particular i think that it tried to be a bit too bluesy in a country song but that's just my opinion and i don't like the kind of tag at the end of it i think that they should have um just added the tag to make and just made it part of the song instead of ending and then coming back into it. I did have a problem with that, but still a good track. I like the track quite a bit. And um, now back to you to the next track, Steve. Well, real quick, I would just like to ask you about the whole album itself. What do you think about the production? Um. I think the production's not that bad on this album. I think the production's fine. It's just... Um, well, my opinion on that was, you know, I used to comment on the production on, on the album or each, you know, song in particular, but this one, I mean, it's country is different than most genres. Like rock and blues, sometimes I, I tend to be a lot more picky about the production, but especially with country, I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter. A lot because there's not a lot of different ways to go because it's more it's more kind of like an unplugged type of thing you know yeah there's there's a lot of electric guitar work going on but it's just not that's not the base of it the base of it's acoustic and you know just yeah more unplugged setting yeah but, uh, there's not anyways, quite as so much going on in the song itself well yeah that's right it's a lot more you know, strip down and yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Anyway, next next uh, track here. Leaving's not the only way to go. This one is uh, one of the couple of covers, the few covers on this album, uh, written by Roger Miller. And uh, the only thing I can say about it, just uh, I really like what he did with it. Honestly, I haven't heard any other versions of it or I guess Roger Miller's version. I mean, like I said, I don't know a lot about the background, but um, written by him, I just, I like the song pretty well. Um, I guess that's about it, brother. What about you? Um, Leaving's not the only way to go. Um, a good song, very much kind of another commentary on how, how the world will, how the world is at that point with, um, a lot of marriages kind of not making it. I mean, people get married and not being able to work their differences out and getting a divorce. Very much an, an anti-divorce sediment. And um, I like the I like the th the theme of the track quite a bit. Just a good song. Once again, the tag at the end. I think that should have been part of the track itself and shouldn't have faded out like it did. And then or ended and then come back in and fade it out. I think it should have been part of the track and just fade it out from there. But um, that's pretty much all I have um, for the most part. It's um, like uh, pretty much, man, you have switched roles from, from the last album we did, the White Snake album, till this album, huh? Yeah, pretty much. I told you, I, I was good. It, I, I mixed with this album, but... um. That's it for um, Leave is Not the Only Way to Go. I like the track, and um, you can get into the next track, Stephen. All right, brother. The next one is called What I've Been Meaning to Say. Uh, let's see. I, I, the only thing that came to mind with this one, uh, pretty sure, yeah, he wrote this one, I think. I think he always had a, a, good, a good love song writing ability, you know? Yeah. Kind of just probably 
it seems like a personal number and all, but um, it, you know anybody can can probably relate to a lot of this stuff on this album. Kind of like I said, on a personal level, and uh, I I guess that's that's about all, brother. Um, what about you? Um, a break in good on the album. <laughs> Um, slow, and I don't like the flute at the beginning of it. Um, not terrible, but still not very good. Kind of boring at times. And I hate that they end and then place a tag at the end of it. It should have been part of the song simply. but um, Or should have been simply part of the song, excuse me. But um, yeah, um, this is kind of a dip in the album to me. And um, like I said, kind of a more slower song on the album. And um, yeah, not really into it, but um, that's all well, I really have to say. <laughs> yeah, see, what you're doing is, is literally just uh, what I was doing last last time or last week, I guess you could say. Um, I was really more trying to, you know, analyze the music of it. As you know, as far as the structure and the, uh, you know, all the all that goes into it, the production and all, and you know, because your your favorite genre would be sort of like what Wood Snake White Snake w- would be pretty much, um, and my this country is probably not my definitely be- definite favorite, but it's one of my favorites to listen to. Kind of, I've always grew up on that, and you probably have too, but. Oh, uh, this country's always been my one of my favorites. So that really, that's that's kind of why I more tend to to be biased to to not really nitpick the music, but more just kind of listen to the lyrics and what it's about more. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I mean, Merle Haggard's lyrics all throughout this album are great. I have no problem with his lyrics whatsoever. I think his his lyrics are by far the best part of all of these songs. I mean, he's a great he's like I said, he's a great lyricist. I just think that the the music itself it, it gets too slow, but um at points, but um yeah, um that's all I have to say for this tra- track. We were at what I've been meaning to say, right? I believe so, brother. All right. Well, um, I was going to say we we spent so long so so long on that one track. I wasn't sure myself. I was having to think. <laughs> yeah. And um you move on to the next track, Steve. Oh, all right, brother. The next one is simply called Mexico. What I referred to earlier, um he has two songs about America on this on this album and then this one's about Mexico, which he he wrote as well. Oh, I thought it was kind of funny how he went from singing about America to this. But anyway, he's basically just in the song saying that, you know, stuff said about Mexico, it's not really, he, he, he's, he's saying that uh, not to not to be afraid to go there or whatever and uh, not listen to the main thing or what's said about it. Basically, that there's a lot of, you know, party going down, going on there, and you can do whatever you want to. But you know, overall, I think I think it's a it's a pretty good song as far as the, the music and all, and uh, pretty unique as well. But uh, what about you, brother? <laughs> Terrible song. I really, really don't like this track. Um... Some of the vocals are very good. I do kind of like when Merle hits kind of the high, kind of the high notes after kind of the bridge where it says, don't be afraid of banditos, no matter what you've heard or whatever. I like where he kind of hits a high note after that. Some good guitar work throughout the songs and the horns that are added, I don't particularly care for either, but um, that's all I have to say pretty much. I don't particularly care for the song. But um, Well, I think the horns are, you know, predominantly for effect. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I kind of question a little bit who they got to arrange some of this stuff. <laughs> but, you know, because it's 
I guess they kind of act like you like you said earlier about the white man singing the blues, the the guitar playing and all that, adding the the blues. It's kind of just for it's, it's supposed to be atmospheric or whatever, kind of an ode to it. Um, but anyway, that's probably the only reason they added it. Not much horns yeah. other than that on the album. Yeah. But, um, but uh, I guess to the next one, or is that all you got to say? That's all I have to say. You can move on. All right. Fine, brother. Uh, the next one uh, was a cover. This one was was pretty popular from, from what I've seen. Uh, Honky Tonk Man. This was... Uh, in my opinion, a, a very good version of it. The best version I've ever heard. Um, uh, my favorite, one of my favorites off the off the album. Um, I think it's a really good song. Um, you know, like I said, it's it's pretty it's pretty old and it's been played quite a few times, probably in the honky tonk setting. But uh, one time I seen this this song played in a movie because I heard it just now and i was thinking well i know i've heard this song somewhere it's before too and I, I realized i was watching this movie and uh i can't even remember what it's called but it was about this country singer and he was and it was actually hank williams jr singing it one of those type of movies uh but anyway that's that's where i've heard that before uh, it was it's, it's, it was pretty popular throughout the whole time t- up until now Probably yeah. still is, but uh, anyway, great version. Uh, what about you, brother? All right, um, Hoggy Tonk Man. Um, I like the vocal progression, but um, I don't like the song too much. It's too much like the other slow songs. I, I think the album needed kind of a more upbeat, kind of more faster paced song around this point. Not great. Not bad, but not great. And um, his voice is a little bit rough in parts, but um, that's all I have to say really about this track. So um, back to you, Steve. Well, the only thing I would like to add for this one is, uh, you know, his, his voice, he, he's he's always been known, in my opinion, to be, his voice is, is kind of rough and rugged anyway. And uh, kind of kind of the same concept as Rod Stewart, you know? Yeah. But, uh it's it's really I mean it's it sounds fine to me for the for the song and all but uh anyway I guess I guess we'll move on to the next one um uh, and we're on about the eighth track I believe yeah the eighth track America First is what it's called uh this the other sort of kind of sort of patriotic number just for lack of a better word but um he has a lot he has a lot to say about america and his and his last song writing and all before this all throughout his career but this one is is in the same light as as the other one about america on this album uh it's more or less kind of kind of saying what america could do better and kind of putting it down in in some ways saying you know we're going out and doing certain things in other countries and giving people money and trying to help other people and that's good and all but we need to we got stuff here that needs to be fixed first we we need to prioritize our own country you know which a lot of people could probably agree with you know he he, his views on stuff like this were probably not too controversial because a lot i mean it's very agreeable you know to, to say that but uh overall great song I mean, all of his songs, I wouldn't say they all sound the same, but the music in them, you know, if, you, if you're not used to listening to country, you might not understand it as much. But to me, it's, it's a great all-around track. But uh, to you, Brother Z. Um, now, this is more like it. Um, I love this track. Probably my favorite on the album. Um, another kind of post-9-11 sediment track. And by that, what I keep saying, post-9-11 sediment, it, it kind of, to me, is kind of written about a lot of the views at that point in time to where, I mean, after that tragedy happened in 2001, people became patriotic and they wanted America to strive. And that that's what I mean by kind of a, a post 9-11 sediment. But um, good song, upbeat, awesome track, great guitar work. 
some rough vocals in points, but or parts, but um, still a very good song, and um, it's short and to the point. And um, there was actually a video made for this track, so I I didn't watch the video or nothing, but um, yeah, um, I love I lo- really I really like this track. Probably my favorite on the album. I put this in the um playlist with um the title track. I did put the title track in my playlist on YouTube, but um, this will go there as well. So, um, All right, that's good, brother. Uh, I kind of agree with you a lot. I think it's it's overall pretty much about about that time period. Obviously, I I mean, I was born in two thousand three, and you were born in two thousand one or so or two. Yeah, two thousand one. Okay, so I mean, that happened. Yeah. Well, I'm just. Uh, you know, really, we wouldn't have, me or you wouldn't have known exactly what it was like in 2005 or around that, you know, area because we were pretty young then. But, uh, I mean, because now we can, we could go back and see, like, stuff. We could tell people, we could know what it was like during the time of the coronavirus or in the time of all the stuff that's happening now with the riots. And, but, you know, back then we were born then at that time, but that, I mean, we don't remember anything about it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just wanted to make that point that I, you know, like you said, it's an ode to that, but it, we really wouldn't have known because we were pretty young then. But, uh, yeah. Well, so, all going, you got to say about it? I'm going off of my viewpoints back to the, um, kind of the way I've seen people look at, kind of think in hindsight or, Watching the interviews and stuff like it, seeing how people thought at that time, because and and listening to how my parents have talked about how people had gotten at that point in time. But um, yeah, we can go on to the next track. That's fine with me. Now I was I wasn't saying that you wouldn't have known or anything, or you shouldn't be saying that. I'm just I'm I'm just making a point, you know. Yeah, to, I understand. That I understand. that's the song is just telling about what it would be like in that time or whatever, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. being being about four years after the fact, right? Yeah. Uh huh. All right, and um, seeing as he probably as well didn't write all these songs at once, <laughs> so I mean, some of these could have been written around the time. But you know, to tell you the truth, listening to this album, I wouldn't have even thought about nine eleven or anything like that. To tell you the truth, because country, it has a lot of patriotism type stuff in it. Anyway, even if it wasn't around this time, uh, that's an interesting thought. That shows how different people can, can look at an album a lot differently. Yeah, interpret it differently. Yeah. Right, right. Well, anyway, uh, if you're ready to move on. Oh, yeah, go ahead. All right. I just want to make sure you don't have anything else to say about it, but um, yeah. I, I cut you off. But here we go. It always will be track number nine. Oh. Uh, Written by Willie Nelson. I'm not sure if this was uh, a, a one that was written for this or if it was already recorded by Willie or anything like that. So I won't make any comments about that because I'd I'd be foolish because I don't really know. But uh, I think it's a great song. Willie Nelson. I mean, he he mainly writes a lot of stuff like this. It really, it really doesn't sound like something he would write, to tell you the truth, to me, at all. I, I, I mean, for the longest time, I thought that Merle wrote it, but apparently Willie did. So uh, I, I don't know if he actually recorded it. It sounds like something that he could have just given to Merle, but I'm not too sure about that. Overall, I think it's a great track, uh, a great country song, and uh, it fits with the album really well. It's musically, for sure. Uh, and I I, th- I think this was um, kind of a co-favorite for me for the album, as well as the one I mentioned before as being, uh, you know, the Honky Tonk Man as well. But, all right, what about you, brother? Um, I didn't know it was written by Willie Nelson, but, um, man, we're back into um, the kind of slow stuff now. But um, not terrible, but still not a very good song in my opinion i'm kind of this this track in particular is kind of fillerish to me 
But um, the chorus is a quintessential kind of, it's a quintessential country chorus. Um, decent lead guitar on this track, and um, the strings that come in at the, in the later part of the song or the latter part of the song. Um, I love that. I'm a I'm a sucker for for strings in music. Anyway, I love I love stuff like that. But um, but the vocals are a bit rough. But um, I mean I'm not going to complain too much about that. And um, the ending I like as well. I like the ending, and I don't want that to sound derogatory or nothing but um i i thought the ending it ended well but um that's pretty much all i can say um i don't have anything else now back to you steven <laughs> that's funny anyway yeah i can i can see how you could take that wrong but anyway uh i know what you mean it's, and it's mainly because like you said um the endings are you know probably pretty unique as far as the most of them, like you said, ending differently, and I I, I didn't really pay it much mind, but um, you know, you're you're pretty much more the analyst of the music for this one. Oh, uh, kind of like we switch up doing. I think I think we just kind of naturally fall into that place. You know, whoever's whoever picked the album, the other one kind of analyzes the music and. For me, I picked this album and it kind of was more because I just like it in the first place and I like the genre and you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more biased to just more talk about the song struck. I mean, not the structure, but more about what it's about anymore, you know? Yeah. But, um, all right. Uh, are you ready to move on, brother? Yeah, go ahead. All right. The next one, I'm trying to make sure I don't skip a track. We're, I'm pretty sure we're on Still Can't Say Goodbye. Yeah, we're on that one, yeah. All right, track number 10, next to last track. Um, I really think it was it was the track listing as far as the order of it was was well picked. As you know, for the for the material that they had. Um I think it's a beautiful song. Um uh, he, he wrote it. And I, I from hearing from hearing his story. And all that, reading about how uh, his dad died when he was four, I believe, and all. It sounds like it was probably from actual personal experience. Uh, talking about how, you know, the old, the old stories about you always want to be like your dad or whatever. And talking about how uh, he went to the store and got a got the brim. I mean, fixed the brim on the hat because it, it looked like his dad and all that. See, that's what I'm talking about with the personal level, you know, like writing on a personal level. That's what really country music is all about. And I think if 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 modern, I mean, I'm not one of those people that say modern country music sucks altogether. But I think if there's a lot of there's a lot of good artists, but if they were if they would keep, you know, writing about more of a personal level and tell stories more like this song does, it would it would be a lot better off for the genre. Because more yeah. now it's become more, I mean, country's more become more like rock, mainly because rock music doesn't depend on the lyrics. It depends on the music just about itself. Half the time with classic rock, you don't even know what it's about because it was written when they were on acid or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, but stuff like here on the radio, I mean, 25 or 6, six two four or something like that what is that about you know but anyway th this is one of those type of songs that is a prime example to me of really country music and the way it should be not to say the music itself is not good which it is but it just doesn't depend on that really it's kind of dependent on the story and you know that's what it's built around uh, and i really like that idea so uh what about you brother um before i get into the track itself i mean that's one thing you're talking about the track listing um i don't have a problem with the i i think my biggest problem thinking about it now is the sequencing i the biggest problem i have is that there's too many slow songs in a row i wish they would have put like something more kind of book kind of a boogie woogie type country track or something a little more upbeat in between those slow tracks to kind of break up the monotony 
But um, and, and like I said, oh, overall, I think the lyrics are very good on this album. And um, but it's just the music to me. And I, I have a problem with like there's a Dio album. I think it's called Magica. I think that's the album. I had a problem with it because it was ma- it was basically mid tempo tracks all the way through. There wasn't any upbeat songs really. But um, I think my biggest problem is the sequencing. Maybe if they resequence the album, maybe I'd like it a bit better. But um, I still can't say goodbye. Terrible <laughs> once again. Um, another slow track. Uh, I, I do like the sediment. I think the lyrics on this track are good. Close it. He says he reaches up into the closet. I know it's, it's supposed to be closet. I know I'm just making a joke. But uh, <laughs> but um, to me, the worst track on the album and um, kind of drags me down a bit. But uh, I, man, I'm sad. I'm sad so bitter about this album. But. <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't particularly like this track at all. But um, I like the sediment. I think the sediment's good. But um, yeah. Um, back to you, Stephen. All right. Well, uh, like I said before, uh, this is pretty much the same same thing. We just switched roles from from the White Snake album. I know I've said that about three or four times, but it just it's pretty much. I mean. It's a hundred percent true. Yeah. It's, it's, and <laughs> but uh, you know, really, I put a lot in of... my notes actually. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I put in my notes actually. The song was kind of depressing, but I didn't want to use that exactly. But, but that's the reason I said drags me down because I didn't want to be that kind of brutal about it. But um, yeah, I put kind of depressing in there. Well, I would like Twitter. to say that if you if you like if, if you like country music, period. This is the this is really the roots of it, you know. This oh, yeah. this type of song, oh, uh, you know, really is where it all started, pretty much. But from Hank Williams to everything, you know, this type of song really. I mean, that's how it all started with, you know, all the great original songwriters and all that, and uh, you know, whatever. But. Um, all right, you ready to move on, bro? Yeah, let's go here. All right, we're to the last track, I believe, right? Um, mm-hmm. I believe this is a great way to finish off the album for whatever reason. It's just a thought. But um, called Some of Us Fly. This was written by Merle Haggard. I, I think this song has some, some uh, pretty clever things in it. As far as the words and all, um, you know, like the rest of this album, pretty straightforward music, stripped down, um, really not a bad in a bad way, but just um, very stripped down, not much to produce, <laughs> maybe to mix, but other than that, you know. Anyway, Toby Keith on it, singing in just about every other verse with Merle. Uh, I thought this was... This was a good idea. I think their voices go well together on the track. Um, and as far as the song itself, pretty good melody and all, and uh, pretty good idea. Pretty good listen. So uh, what about you, brother? Um, Like you said, a duet with Co- Toby Keith. Another slow one, but um, it is a good ending for the album itself. I don't particularly like the song. Merle Hager's voice is kind of unlike the rest of the album to me. I mean, I, it may me it may be me hearing Merle Haggard and Toby he, Toby Keith together singing, but um, and I mean, but they do kind of have a very similar voice, to be honest. At least in my opinion, they do. And um, great lyrics throughout. This it was also interesting um, hearing someone else singing Merle Haggard's lyrics. That was pretty cool to me. Because I mean, like you said, his lyrics are kind of one of a kind and are very interesting on the in the way they are written out and stuff like that. But um, it was very interesting hearing someone else sing his lyrics. But um, overall, I don't particularly like the track, but I do still think it's a good way to close the album. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say. So um, I guess um, you have anything else on this track, Stephen? Um, well, not for this one. It's, uh, 
it seems pretty long listen to it all the way through it's, it's got a lot of lyrics to it kind of poetic more than anything kind of yeah. like kind of unlike a lot of his writing this one's more poetic and kind of you know just uh it, it kind of something where you hear it and it doesn't really take it you know all the way for what he says you know more yeah uh, poetic it is poetic is the only thing i can take to describe it so, something sounds something more like bob dylan might write to tell you the truth but <laughs> um i guess that's that's about it for for that one and uh i guess now uh what do you think about the whole album as a whole brother um overall i think like i said i think the sequencing i think there's a little bit too many slow songs on the album i wish it were, there was more upbeat stuff to break up the, the monotony a very short album i mean it, mine came in at like 38 minutes um but it 40 you said 40 minutes so i it, i mean it not a huge difference a minute or two of the difference um i may have sound like i was really hard on this album I don't hate this album as much as I, it kind of sounded like I did. Um, I'm more or less kind of on the fence on this album. The songs I really liked, I do indeed like. But um, the song I said I didn't like, I'm more or less kind of on the fence. I don't think they're terrible songs, but I think they're, I, I don't, I, I, it's just the fact that a lot of it is way too slow. And I think this album, I mean, it's kind of a little bit slow and me li and and I've listened to it three times and it, it kind of seemed to me like a much more of a longer listen when I was listening to it. And I mean, 38 minutes is a pretty, it's a fairly short album length, but um, I mean, in closing, I think Merle Haggard's lyrics are great and I, I love Merle Haggard's music. I mean, I, I'm going to say that straight up. I don't want to sound like I'm bad-mouthing the guy and saying he's not talented, because I, really I really like his music. But this album in particular, I just it really didn't grab me. Maybe if I continued listening to it here in the future, maybe, maybe it'll grab me, and maybe I'll grow to like it quite a bit. But I've heard it three times, and every time those tracks in particular I didn't care for. Initially, I thought I was going to really like the album listening to it but then it just took a dive and really i just really didn't care for it anymore but um yeah um what about you steven your final thoughts on the album well for the whole album um uh, i would say <clears throat> i keep on wanting to say whole album as a whole but that don't sound right does it but anyway uh i would like to say that that all the songs have a, a common quality all of them are very mellow, uh, kind of an easygoing overall sound to the entire thing as far as just uh, the instrument choice. I mean, not not a lot of instruments going on like, like we have pointed out before. That kind of leads to, to a kind of a more mellower sound. In my opinion, that's that's pretty much why. And really, the stuff the stuff going back to what you were saying earlier, you know, could have been. You're not really saying that the songs themselves that the they were not bad. You're just saying that, uh, you know, the album structure as a whole and all that. Uh, if you were to produce it, you know, then you would probably go a different direction with it. Is what you're saying, huh? Yeah, you would. I, I you would, would make. I would put more faster paced stuff in there more than like. I would put like a swinging doors on here, a working man blues or something like that on here. Yeah, something in that same sediment, huh? Yeah, something in the same vein as those songs. Something to kind of pet things up. But I I do think that the, the album is as far as like the length, it's fine. I I but to, to be honest, I have a little bit of a thing against long albums. Some sometimes long albums are really good, but other at other times um at other times i think some albums are too long kind of for, for the gratuitous reason of being long just because they could put a bunch of tracks on there and i, I think back when they had vinyl records and stuff like that i do think that they had to work under a time length and a budget length a lot more 
And so that made albums a lot more tighter and contained. And I do like it about this album. I think this album is the perfect length. I think 38 minutes is good. But I'm um, sorry to cut you off, Stephen. But um, continue on. Yeah, that's that's fine, brother. That's that's what we're pretty much just doing is just making our points and uh, you know just just that's what the the purpose of this is a review to tell our opinions and all and not just state the facts of the album. Uh, but really, the, my total opinion on the album is uh, you know would be different from yours because you're you're a lot more accustomed to listening to the, you know stuff like White Snake and. Uh, a lot harder things and you hear stuff like this a lot probably like if you go when you go down to the opera and play like uh you know because you're in the band and all especially you have you're around it a lot but really um i think you grew up on on some different stuff than i did and that's why your opinion would be a lot different than mine yeah because especially with my uncle and uh my granny and papa really more I, I hung around them quite a bit and they listened to a lot of stuff, you know, not like, not just like this, but most of it was, was kind of slow and kind of mellow like that. It's kind of more what I grew up on and I've kind of, I've come a lot more accustomed to like it more. And you're, you, you kind of prefer uh faster anyway, don't you kind of harder music? Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm a borderline metal head pretty much. <laughs> Well, I, that's what I was kind of thinking when I picked this album to do the review on. I, I was, I just thought it would be kind of a different mix-up to 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 have your take on something like this because it was completely opposite of something you would choose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I have that's, nothing against choosing something like this. I love it, and like I said, I don't hate country or anything like it. I like I like country, but I mean, it's just this particular album didn't grab me. But um, I mean, like you said, though, I am a borderline metalhead. I I listen to mostly hard rock and stuff and metal. So from what I've seen, and uh, I mean, you know, we ride the bus together and all, and I've I see I see a lot of stuff you listen to and you show me and all, and a lot of it's that kind of you know stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you I I, I listen to. Uh, a, a really a wide range of stuff and you do too really uh but uh probably i i'm probably you know have a, a a wider range of stuff that i like um not saying that's better for better or worse but i mean because I, I grew up on more stuff like country and uh more classic rock you know maybe some some pop stuff like not modern pop but more like stuff like pop like stuff you would consider pop from the from the 90s or whatever sort of that kind of thing my my mom and dad are more into that kind of stuff but um that's just because what i kind of grew up on and as well as like southern rock especially because leonard skinner is, is one of my favorites so uh yeah overall i think I think this was a great album, brother, and uh, I guess we'll we'll kind of wrap this up. We've got we we've kind of covered the track listing and pretty much all there is to say. So uh, I'd say let's get let's just give our ratings, and then I guess we'll be about done. I give this one. I'm gonna just go ahead and say I'll give it a ten out of ten. Uh, I really think that there's there's not a lot of flaws as far as the the genre as for the genre and as far as the you know the whole mood of the album that it's supposed to be um but that's coming for me and uh what about you brother coming from you what's your uh mm -hmm. out of 10 here <laughs> i give this album a six out of ten not bad but not great either. i give it a six out of ten so um yeah. all right so so one last thing i would like to say i didn't mean to cut you off but um so would you if you if you were the producer and you would have would you would have had a choice between the more stripped down, you know, n just bare minimal of instruments you could do, like this album was. Would you do that, or would you add more instrumentation, more string stuff, you know, more just to kind of more stuff to produce of it, not just mix. You know what I'm saying? Like more, what the more whatever. So, what do you think about that, brother? 
Um, probably for me, probably in the middle where it was necessary, probably to where I thought that maybe like strings were necessary or maybe, maybe probably somewhere in the middle, maybe where they're, where they're exactly necessary at. So, so, you know, I was just, um, I was just wondering because you you made uh, a couple of comments about that. Uh, the, the track listing, but I was just wondering if you had to work with the only the tracks, and you like so you already had this album already made, or not made, but just already recorded and everything. So that's what that's the only thing you would change is uh, maybe more a little bit more strings and stuff, and and maybe leave some of the horn stuff out with the one track, and uh, you know just a thought. So that's all you would do. Yeah, pretty much. I, that's what I think I will do is just where it's necessary, I would add this and that in. But um, for the most part, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I do prefer a more stripped down arrangement. I just like when sometimes people add kind of, I guess you could say, the kitchen sink in there and bells and whistles and stuff like that. I do like that, but only when it's necessary. I mean, sometimes it, it can become way too overblown, but... um. I mean, that's my opinion on that. But, um, well, is that all you got, Stephen? Well, um, yeah, I've got, I've got one more thing. Um, I would just like to say if I, if I was to, you know, like, a, like the question I asked you earlier about the, if you were to produce it or whatever, I would say, oh, it was just a thought that I would probably do it just the way it was. Cause I think, um, I think it all it overall went well, and if you if you really go back and listen to his original albums, especially his first few original albums, his first ones really the horns sometimes is what drives the song, and um, you know like with the song Mexico and this one, I can see how it would it might not fit with the genre, just because it's supposed to sound like Mexico or whatever, and that sound. But really, in his older stuff, the horns is what drives the music, and um, as country as country goes and all, it's, I mean, there's you don't really think of country as as being a, a heavy horn section type of thing, but it's just kind of a Merle Haggard thing, to tell you the truth. Yeah, kind of. That's just kind of a staple for him. I don't know about live. Probably not live. Maybe just more on on record. Is all I've have, I would have to say. But uh. Anyway, I guess we can go ahead and wrap up. Uh, that's that's his uh, Merle Haggard Chicago Wind, and uh, I guess you can you can say what you usually say, brother. You know. Uh, oh, well. But um, I do want to go ahead and say next re- the next review that we're going to do, it'll be my pick next, and um, we're going to do something that I'm going to pick this, and I actually really kind of don't like this album in particular but um i just i want to get steven's opinion on this particular one it's something more in the back in the hard rock vein and um one i don't particularly like this that whole particular particular era i don't really like but um and i and um i don't want to lose listeners for saying we're going to review this but um Van Hagar's fifty one fifty. We're gonna do that one next. Um that's gonna be interesting because I haven't really heard that album in a long time. Um it's one I don't hate a lot, but um still it's not one of my favorites in particular. But um we'll get to more of my opinion next time. Um what do you think about that, Stephen? Well, I think it'll be another switch of roles and I'll I'll be in your position <laughs> this time this next time around. I'll probably be more analy- analytical of uh the music itself. Um and I you know, needless to say, I don't I don't know anything about the album. Probably never even heard of it before. Um but You know a song on it. Well, probably so but as far as the album name i probably never i mean i might have heard you you know mention it once or twice but other than that i mean it'll it'll be an interesting you know little tidbit to what i've got to say probably 
because yeah. I mean, I needless to say, I've never heard of it or anything, so it'll probably be quite new to me. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, we're going to be reviewing Van Halen's Fifty One Fifty from nineteen eighty six. Um, the first they did with Sammy Hagar. I said I disliked it. Um, I don't particularly dislike the album. I, I kind of actually kind of like it, but still, it's not one of my favorites in particular. Um, yeah, I have some problems with it, pretty huge problems, but um, yeah, we'll get into more of that next time. But, um, like I said, you'll probably hear a couple of episodes with the in between this one and saints and centers saints and centers was went out last week we're recording this on june the first on a monday of 2020 so um yeah um you'll probably hear those two episodes in between here and there but um i mean subscribe to our youtube channels um the the dunnigan mott music and movie podcast youtube channel um Stephen Mott's YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of stuff on there, different reviews. There's a commentary with me and Stephen Mott doing um, doing Halloween H2O 20 years later. And um, I'm out for my first season right now. I'm going to take a break. I've been meaning to do some reviews. I just haven't got around to it yet. But um, I, I have some stuff on the back burner I'm waiting to do. But, um, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Very, it was very interesting, kind of kind of, <laughs> kind of a change of roles. Usually everything we've done so far, either me and him both liked or either with the previous episode I loved, and then he, um, he kind of had a mixed opinion on it. But, um, yeah, um, we'll be back with 5150 next time. Um, like I said, I don't know exactly when that will be. But um, it'll be here pretty pretty soon. And um, hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Dunnigan Mott Music and Movie Podcast Reboot. Yeah, we're, we're rebooting everything now. And um, hope you all enjoyed. Stay safe. Um, thank you all for listening. God bless you all. And as I say in my YouTube reviews and various videos, whatever. See you next time. <laughs>